this, I'd like to start by discussing um, the minutes. The minutes of May twelfth. Uh, is there any discussion? Has everyone read them? Any questions? Was it accurate? Wasn't it accurate? Yeah, the, Wordy. The one, Wordy. The one. I thought Amy did a great job, though. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. All in all. Um, the one comment I had was, uh, I thought I read in there that Brian was recommending a one twelfth budget. Is that true, Brian? I thought you were going for the full year budget. No, we talked about it. We're just right. a, we're just approving the minutes. Well, yeah, it's in the minutes. Uh, it's in the minutes. I the thought last that, meeting. Yeah, um, I questioned that too. Is I that think true, I, Brian. Were you recommending one twelfth budget? No. no. I just said options. No, it was option. a recommendation. Options. It was just an option. What it says, O P T I O N S options. It was just something that was on the table, and uh, oh, everyone right. felt it was right. best to go with the full twelve. Um, do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I make a motion we accept the minutes. A second. All those in favor, say by aye. 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 Any nays? Okay. Is that a roll call vote? Well, would you like to do that? Yeah, you're supposed to. Okay, what's good? Roll call vote. Number one, Dan Kennedy. I accept. Are you here? I'm here. Okay. James Kirkendall. I accept. I'm here. Fred Barron. Accept. I'm here. Um, who else? Paul Ante. I accept. Yes, I'm here. And Bob. Come on, last name. I accept I'm here. Biden Kevitz. Bob Biden Kevitz. Very good. Okay, very good. Tom Maha. Oh, he's coming in. Hold on. Is he? Yeah. He's in the waiting room right now. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where, <laughs> oh, my here. goodness gracious. Yeah. You must have got that crank going. Hey, Tom, can you hear us? Connected. Get there. See Brian. There All right, is. I can't hear you. Hey, come! I can't hear you. What about now? We can hear you. Are we good? Tom, can you hear us? Maybe I got to raise my volume. Yeah. Maybe. I, yeah. How about now? I, I can hear you now. There Perfect. you go. I can hear you. Um, we just did the roll call, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it off by saying, Tom Maha, I'm here. Perfect. <laughs> Brian, you good? Yeah. All righty. So here's the roll call. Oh, we're all in. Uh, select board is completely on board. We've got uh, Joyce Fortune, Jonathan Edwards. And Fred Olaski, um, we got everybody in. Terrific. Okay, Brian, um, did everyone get the paperwork Brian sent out earlier today? Thank God. Okay. All okay. right. Um, Brian, how would you like to to go through this? Uh, the fiscal year twenty one, the operating budget. Um, do we want to just, we just want to highlight which areas are being sort of brought back? Yeah. Instead of doing a line, line item, um, item by item. Um, so I saw what came in and I'm guessing everything in yellow is a decrease. Oh, is that just a highlight? Which one? I, what? Which uh, document are you looking at? Uh, projected um, budget projections number two. Flight one one. What should we be looking at? So we're all looking at the same thing. Yeah. Was this sent out today? Yes. Yes. I did not get it. Could you resend it to me, Brian? Yep. Neither did I, Jim, Fred. 
Okay. What is this? Projections number two? Uh, oh, let's look at proposal to reduce fiscal year 2021 projected tax levy. What's, what's the name of that file? Can you put that on the screen? Yep, I'll put it on the screen. Let me just send it to Fred first. Okay. It's that one page, right? Yep. Okay, I got it. Oh, I did get that one. You need a friggin' be Superman to read it. Yeah. You got Zoom? <clears throat> I agree. Yeah. I have to Zoom. Fred, what's your email address? Fred Barron, what's your email address? Uh, it's High Ridge, H I G H R I D G E. At Pipeline? At, right. Huh. It looks like it went to you. I never, I never got it. I just checked the email right now and never saw it. All right. Let's try this and then I'll share it on the screen. Okay. Don't lose us. <laughs> no. Gotta love this. Okay, I just got it, Brian. Okay. Did that work? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Of course, you can't read it, though. Barely. I can read it now. It's not bad. It's good. Isn't there a, a, a Zoom feature on it? Yeah, it's a better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, Brian, take it away. So, <clears throat> these are areas of possible cost savings. So, let me back up quickly. So if, if our goal is to reduce the overall tax levy, we can do two things. We can decrease expenses or we can, <clears throat> excuse me, increase non-property tax revenue. <clears throat> um, what I forgot on the original one was that there's the proposed $1 bag, in, uh, bag fee increase at the transfer station. That to my understanding has already been voted by the solid waste committee. Um, so that's going to generate an estimated for an additional $14,000 in fees so that that goes under local receipts. So that will help lower that, um, it will help lower the property tax revenue. <clears throat> so in terms of decreasing expenses, <clears throat> the Waitley elementary school voted to level fund the, their budget. So that's a savings of, um, as you see there, $44,829. Frontier Regional School, <clears throat> level funded as well. And that's a decrease. So these are decreases from the original tax levy <clears throat> that was presented in budget projection, in the original budget projection. Um, so there's still a small increase from Frontier, but it's a $37,000 reduction on that. Um, Franklin Tech does not plan on submitting a revised budget. And there was an attachment to the this kind of lengthy that was included to the in your email. Um, it talks about the situation that they're in. Um, they're likely going to be going to a 112th budget. Um, they're in a they're in a unique situation because if not all of their if not all of their communities adopt the budget in time, they have to go to a 112 budget. So more likely than not, they're going to go to a 112 budget anyways. Um, and they talk about what they're. So what does that mean to us? That means that if we submit a, if, if we approve a full budget, it means very little to us. So even if their budget came down, we wouldn't see any savings. No, yes, we would. Okay. We would. That's okay. Yep. Brian, are they attempting to reduce their budget? 
No, uh, my understanding is no. Can I ask why not? Um, you may not know, I understand that. I'm just. Uh, I can forward you the email from uh, Russ. It's it, pretty it lengthy. It had to do with the timing. How many towns don't have to approve it? Um, I can double check. Yeah, that's not a big deal. I'm not sure if it's two thirds or if it's a half. I just, I just wonder where we're sitting in this. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we don't have much pull at all. No, but I mean, you you can got, kind of get a feel for which towns are involved and you can kind of think about which way they're gonna go. Yeah, my understanding is Greenfield passed their full budget. And I think they're the, I think they're the biggest fish in the pond. You must be. Sure. Well, we'll see what happens downstream with the 112 budget, so. Yeah, yeah. we don't have any control over that budget. No, no, very low. Uh, next, next it would one have been one. nice though. <clears throat> Well, yeah, because it makes up the biggest, our biggest increase by far. Yeah. Yeah, but we're, we're committed to it. But I mean, if it gets something back, you get something back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But in, these, in this time, when everybody's trying to pitch in and do a little bit for the bottom line, it doesn't, it doesn't leave a good taste in your mouth. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. We're, we're not exactly not. Very disappointed. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Public works. <clears throat> public works. $31,000 reduction in public works. This assumes that the wood chipper is rented and that the, excava the excavator is purchased. Um, I think Keith said that we, can, we could knock off an additional, I think it's around $6,000 if we were to do a lease purchase for the wood chipper because we would take the 6,000 that he has in there for rentals and we would shift that to capital money. Uh, but right now it's listed at, as 31,000. That's something we'll have to talk about at the end so, here. So, so that would be a savings to us? It, an additional 6,000 in savings, right. Okay. Um, we had talked about level funding the fire department even before all of this took place. Right. I believe that's probably still true. Yes. <clears throat> um, and we're getting to smaller amounts here as, as we move forward. Yeah. Um, $5,000 off legal, $4,000 off injured on duty insurance. Um, some of these we've gotten actual, the actual proposals in now because it's almost June. Um, Library 2,500. When they when they hired the new director, there was a um, a reduction in salary. Um, so there's we can probably uh, we could do the 2,500. The ad commission has a, you typically has a budget of 1,500. Um, they haven't spent anything in I think the last three years. Mm. Um, group health insurance we could probably I was talking with Lynn we could probably reduce it by 10,000. Um, that's one of those budgets that that's an estimate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have our people who are on the plans now, but there's always people that, um, typically from the schools that are on or off. Um, so if you get two family plan, two new family plans that come in, it's you can blow that budget up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that group health is just, that's a maybe at best. That yeah. We may have to fund it in the end. Right. Um, so every year in, and in this budget, we typically put in $25,000 to the OPEP trust. Um, we could delay that or we could not do it this year. Um, really the only loss that we would have is, is the investment, you know, the investment savings in the trust on. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five thousand. We we um, could we could in future years we could create a, a scenario where we could claw some of that back though, right? Yep. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. From how so let's talk about the transfer station. Um, 
How much, how much uh, is allotted for quote unquote tipping fees? 9,000. Um, recycling or trash? Either or, because oh. I'm going to guess both are going to decrease. You think they're going to decrease? I totally think they're going to decrease. Why is that? I think they were talking about $40,000 more last year at the last meeting. I think there's something you got to bring Fran in. Brian, you, what do you think? Yeah, I would have to defer to Fran. Um, right now it's recycling tipping fees, $9,700. Trash tipping fees. Sixteen thousand. I seem to think it was a lot more than that. For That's tipping fees. There's hauling fees. Yeah. I seem to think it was around 40,000 more, but maybe not. Maybe I'm just not, not thinking right. The overall supply, the overall general expense budget is 42,000. Yeah. Why don't we continue with the decreased expenses, Brian? Yeah. Get so back. Think, Go ahead. So I think we could. I think we could see about a thousand dollars from rec. I think two thousand dollars from the town fuel account. Fuel prices are fuel prices are pretty low right now. Um, and then there's questions about what to do with colas and salary adjustments. Um, so the cola that was recommended by the personnel committee, and that's what the amount would be was fourteen thousand dollars. That was a two percent. 2%, um, and there were four salary adjustments, and that those would total 10,900. That's not included in that bottom line figure there, the 183, 386. Um, and that's something that we'd have to discuss. Um, it was a recommendation of the personnel committee to adjust those salaries based on the, the salary survey that the personnel committee does. Um, and the, so the personnel committee is recommending that $10,900 in salary increases be maintained in the budget. The personnel committee has not meant, uh, has not met. Okay. This is, this is pre COVID-19. <clears throat> one of the, one of the options that we have for COLAs is to, by my, by my assessment, hold them back, put them in, in some type of escrow. And if we have the money, we could fund it retroactively. And if we don't have the money, we don't have the money, but it might give some level of flexibility on that COLA piece if we just escrowed it in some way. Yeah, but what do we do about budgeting it? Do we budget it as an expenditure or not? Yeah, you would not budget it as an expenditure. No. Okay. And I'm just throwing it out as an option just to, to yeah. just something to do on. Because we don't know what state aid is going to look like. and No idea. You know, so I don't think, you know, we should throw the baby out with the bathwater here. And I think Jonathan makes a good point that, that – leave options open if possible um can't we can we just add that at a special town meeting say now no. we're adding colas to every town employee and you come out of i assume if we have free cash why do we need to set it up in a separate account why would you want to spend money on a special town meeting well we usually have them anyway i'm not saying just for that yeah true I mean, why, why set it up in a special account? I don't know. Well, under the circumstances, we're having problems why? setting up a regular town meeting. 
having extra town <laughs> meetings <laughs> very to good. be avoided. Yeah. I, I just think it, Fred, I, I just think it, and, and this to Fred Orlowski, Fred, I, I just think it gives employees a sense of comfort that, that we're, we're doing our best to have their best interests in mind in these very troubling times if we have a separate account. If we don't have a separate account, there may not, in the, in the, in the in the lens of a, an employee, there may not be a there there. That's all I'm saying. If you put it in a separate account, Jonathan, then it's it's an expense. And, you know, we would take the fourteen thousand and put it in a bank account. Let's say it's an expense. If yeah. you, yeah, I, I get your point. In, in in some way, and and said, you know, if everything works out all right, we'll take it out of free cash. I'm acceptable to that. But if you if you put it in a separate account, it's an expense. And then it's we're not gonna be able to take it off of the budget. Well, yeah, we could just we could just pay ourselves. We it would have to be in the budget, but we then it would go to yeah, okay. I get your point. I just I'm just trying. I get your point too. And I think you yeah. you make it known to the town employees that, you know, we got your back that if everything works out good, you know, we'll, we'll have the 14,000 for the 2% colas. But we right. don't, who, you know, nobody's got a crystal ball here. Nobody knows what's going to happen. No. Yeah. Can I ask a okay. question? Sure. sure. Um, so what I'm hearing people suggesting is that you can kind of wait until some um, not yet determined date in the fall uh, for presumably this group, Finance Committee and Select Board, to decide if there's enough money in free cash, which has to get recertified. So that sort of sets a, an early date for when you could possibly do this. The earliest date being, I mean, often free cash isn't really certified until October. Uh, I'm guessing in this climate, states not necessarily giving on top of that. They don't even have their own budget in order. Um, so it, it could be like six months in before anybody would see any of this. Um, that's sort of not our fault, but we're sort of saying we look at this at again in about half a year, essentially. I'm well, thinking. there's another way to do it. Just don't offer colas. Oh, no. I, oh, yeah. Basically, <laughs> don't offer them now. Reconsider yeah. them later. Don't offer them at all. Then you won't have to worry. You don't even have to have this conversation. Okay, I was actually still in, uh, I had a different idea to put out there um, with this. Um, I, I guess I don't feel as strongly about the COLAs being delayed as I do about the, um, the other wage adjustments that we personnel committee had uh, looked at for people whose pay was out of line with the t towns we compare with. And that added, that was uh, I think almost 11, thousand dollars um and uh so uh, the number seems like a big number and a small number at the same time <laughs> um but i i wonder if we can at least go part way on that um if we just to just to acknowledge to people that you know we we do value the personnel committee certainly value that we value uh everything they're doing um and i think we should at least consider going part way if we can on those adjustments um, and whatever you decide about the colas, whether to just not do them at all or to um, do the you know reconsider halfway through. That's something that kind of affects everybody equally. Um, but I think the the personnel committee was really trying to address places where people are 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 out of line uh including the transfer station attendants who have been doing probably deserve hazard pay at this point but um sure. that's so a anyhow um i just want to put that idea out there as a way of kind of recognizing i mean I, I think our town employees are awesome and i think they've really stepped up to the plate and i wish i could wish we could offer them you know, more and i think um uh we we don't want to overpromise though. So on the other part no. of me is to back off on what we would normally want to do, and see what we can do later. I think you know, that um, that's uh, that's probably a sentiment held by most people. Um, 
everyone sees the efforts that uh, that our town employees put into their jobs and uh, the results are there. Yes. I mean, that's not a question. Um, right. I, I think someone brought up, maybe Tommy, that maybe we look at um, the, these monies uh, from a different source uh, downstream. You know, I, I think I'd be open to that. Um, but I, but whether this is in or whether this is out, I think at the end of the day, we got to be able to look the taxpayer in the eye and say, we didn't raise taxes. We kept taxation level. And um, I think uh, however we do that, um, that's, that's the first goal. And to keep obviously town, um, the town needs, um, you know, still there, so. Um, well, even as you move forward, you have to be leery of revenue sources drying up. Right. No matter what we do. <clears throat> I mean, you even have to think in the back of your head, maybe down the road, you have to furlough some employees. Even that doesn't look like it would happen this year, but I would say next year, you're probably seriously looking at it. Yep. Well, and the other unknown is, you know, the, the elementary school teachers still don't have a contract. So they can say that it's level funded all they want, but what happens, I mean, collective bargaining, collective bargaining. And, and I haven't heard anyone talk about that scenario. Well, well, back to the school, I want to know what's going to happen if, I don't, I don't know, what, what's Waitley Elementary, 150 students? Yes. And uh, what happens if, okay, what happens if there's only 90 in the fall? If they open it all. Yeah. So we're, gonna, we're funding a school right now that might not even be open, just like when Darius was here, couldn't tell us there was much more savings in a budget at Frontier ending the year. Yep. I mean, I, I, I'm just absolutely ludicrous that they didn't have any idea cost savings at all in an empty building. So there are a lot of plates spinning in the air here, and we, we don't really, um, you can't really put your arms around them um, because we've got to have, wait to see how, we've got to wait to see for the fallout. So I think if we keep everything in front of us and keep options open um, and get an understanding from everybody how we generally feel. I think we generally feel like if we could give town employees a raise that we would, um, that that would be a good thing to do. Um, and so on and so forth throughout the budget. But you're not gonna be able to hang on to every dollar. No, no way. And so, um, so we got to also, that also has to be paramount in our thinking regarding the budget as a whole. So, um, well, and Paul, I also think that shared sacrifice is the way to sell this whole thing. And if it's not seen as shared sacrifice, then we're spinning our wheels. You're right. I agree. Um, and, and so that's how it is. So, um, Brian, um, where are we with your sheet here? Our net change to excess levy capacity is 47045. Yeah. Okay. So it well, basically, that means if we could cut another 47045, the tax rate would stay the same. Is that what I'm getting? No, that, um, that means all other things being equal, sort of. That our excess levy capacity will increase by 47045. It's grown. Um, it's grown. That's one of the, one of the things that we've tried to do is keep growing the excess levy capacity. Okay. Um, again, that's, that's the difference between what our tax levy is and what we can generate, okay. uh, without requiring an override right now. It's, um, it's around or less this current fiscal year. It's, uh, 978,236 and it would bump it up to 1 million just over $1 million. Um, the other, the original budget would have us eating into that excess levy capacity. Mm -hmm. And that's one way to, one way to judge to sort of how the budget's doing is if you want to look at 
um, your two and a half percent increase plus a certified new growth, that's around 191,532. So that's about, if we were under the, if we were really hard up against two and a half, that's how much additional revenue we could raise would be the 191,532. Right. Um, under this scenario, we're, we're raising 142,678 in new tax revenue. So the difference in that will boost our excess levy capacity a little bit more. Ryan, could I back up a, a little bit? The Wheatley Elementary School budget reduction, I didn't see any breakdown of that. I assume there's no staffing reductions. It's miscellaneous across the board reductions. That's my understanding, yeah. Okay. The response I got was it's, it's growth that's not going to happen. Okay. But no <laughs> staffing reductions? I don't believe so, no. Okay. But, but these two, uh, the school budgets, correct me, Brian, if I'm wrong, these reductions they're showing now are from their proposed budget earlier this year. It is yeah. not necessarily from the fiscal year 20 budget, or is it a decrease? Both of these are actually increasing from last year's budget, even with these reductions, right? Yeah, they are. That's my so It's complaint. not like they're level funding. They're not level no. funding to, to year 2020 because they're all showing an increase of four to five percent. Well, where are you looking? Well, no, you showed another uh, page a while ago. Uh, elementary school budget was 44,000 higher. Okay, yeah. what are they? That was a two percent. Okay, the, the regional, frontier regional budget was 53,000 higher. In the previous year, they're only showing a thirty-six thousand reduction. Right, they're level funding the frontier budget. For frontier, right, not the elementary. No, but they're not level funding Waitley's assessment. We got more kids going. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's how. Okay. So that's why we still have around a sixteen thousand dollar increase okay. from last year. On a, on a school that's probably not going to open in the fall. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Brian, have you um, spoken to any of the, either Darius or anybody at Waitley regarding um, new Chromebooks for all the students? No, I have not heard from them. I've... Because it's my understanding that the Deerfield schools, um, are, Deerfield Elementary are getting, all the kids are getting Chromebooks. That may be true. I'm not sure if it's actually happening, but they have around half a million dollars to, I almost said waste, spend from the CARES Act. Waste, better term. From the CARE package. The, yeah, the Federal CARES Act. Okay. How did we do in that? 139,000. Okay. I think it's at least a discussion in Waitley. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Um, well, that's a, okay. So, um, from, but Brian, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I saw something that showed uh, pretty much <clears throat> a level impact to, um, to taxation with this budget. Well, if we use this, if we use this budget number, town operating budget number, and assuming the projections from from previous are correct in terms of our our reduction in state aid, it would still it would raise the tax rate to fifteen eighty nine per thousand. That's the gray box up above. It would be a twenty two cent, and it would increase the average single family tax bill by seventy dollars. How do we get rid of that twenty two cents? You cut about seventy thousand dollars more, or state aid comes in seventy thousand dollars better. Oh yeah, we we'll just really kind of hold your breath. Mm -hmm. I have another question too. What happens if they don't match CPA money? Well, I think that affects future years, doesn't it? Right, they, that wouldn't affect this year. If who doesn't match it? State. If the state doesn't match it for, I'm only talking about the town hall expense. How much a year is that if they match? 
Well, the state match can fluctuate. <laughs> I know that. Isn't so that I, way we do? Presumably, it could go to a 5% match. Presumably. Yeah. But we can't borrow more than our, than our local share in terms of debt service. I know, but we know we have that they, the CPA is committed to pay for the town hall. Correct. $43,000. So, so we, so realistically, we CPA money for us comes in at more than 50,000 a year. Yeah. Okay. That's not, that won't be an issue then. Mm -hmm. That's provided the state ponies up the monies. Well, I mean, I, the, it sounds like Waitley collects more than fifty thousand a year from the taxpayer and CPA yeah, money. Taxpayer, yeah. So I've really, it's yeah, a yeah. really a moot point. Okay. The, the other way to to reduce some of this budget, is, and I know if we're getting into it, is the uh, uh, capital improvements that we're funding. Deciding on which of them we want to fund. Yep. Um, Brian, you want to go there now? Well, the only the only capital improvement that that will impact the the operating budget would be the debt service that we pay on the fire truck, and we have to pay that. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Okay, so, this so is you, the last year, isn't it? This is the last payment on that thing, right? This is the last yeah, year. This is the you last can pay year. it with whatever source you want. You could pay it with with new tax revenue. You could pay it with stabilization. You could pay it with free cash. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Right now, it's coming from the from the operating budget. Okay, but if, but if we agree no. to the projects we're going to fund from the capital uh, improvement, yeah, good. Pardon me. I didn't. I didn't catch that. If you were talking to me. Okay, perfect. Uh, are we? Driveway. Are we agreed to what capital improvement projects we're going to fund next this in this budget? No, I, I think we agreed that last time. So how much is? Let's back up to the fire truck. Yep. So do we have to pay it all out of the operating budget? We don't have to pay any of it out of the operating budget. So if you're really looking for savings, you could, you could, you could split the payments between a couple different places. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, and I don't think, I don't see why we would, would not do that. I mean, that again, that's why we have capital stabilization. We have one specifically for vehicles. I mean, as we do. And, yeah. It, it spends down your reserves, and that, that's what it, what it does. But that's what it's for. We could do that. Right. That would mean less free cash going forward then, right? No. Well, that's we're trying to preserve the tax rate. We'll be reserve. less in your reserves. Um, to come out of stabilization, that would have to be done on town floor. Right? Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, I mean, well, that would that'd be an easy vote to win, Paul. Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt that. Um, um, so the, yeah, and, and I, I think that's cleaner than going the free cash route. Myself. Absolutely. Um, so, how much money is that? Is the is the debt service? Just over uh, eighty-one thousand. The debt service is eighty-one thousand for the, the fire truck. But well, we got left 40, didn't you just say 43? Didn't someone just say that? No. That's CPA Town Hall. CPA Town Hall, okay. All right. Wait, so so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm confused. What are we on the hook for this year for the fire truck debt service? I think about 100,000. 80,000. In one year? It's a five-year note. It's the last year of a five-year note. Very expensive truck. Yes. Mm -hmm. Last last one we're ever going to buy. Is anybody sitting here? Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> um, okay. So if you wanted to fund all of that from from other sources in the operating budget, then you would you would you know drop your operating budget eighty thousand. So you're gonna. Well, why don't you break it down and see what it looks like? You're gonna you're gonna go down to the tax rate most likely. That's all assuming state aid. Right. Uh, my, uh, that all assumes our projections in state aid are accurate, which of course they're not going to be. No. <laughs> what would you be your best guess that state aid would drop? 
Worst case, best case. Our two biggest accounts um, are Chapter 70 and unrestricted general aid. In the projection, it has a four and a half drop in Chapter 70. This is based on the Great Recession in a 40% drop in unrestricted general government aid. So how much is 40%? Um, More or less, ballpark it. 55,000. Yeah. It's a chunk. Yeah. They announced today that there's six billion dollars off right now. Oh, they're going to be more than that. Well, so I'm just April, saying what they announced today. Yeah, April was two and a half billion. So you got May and June, and I can tell you firsthand what it's like. <laughs> yep. Yeah, some tough uh, scenarios out there. People in, in terms of your problems. sales tax revenue, you're saying, Bobby, right? Yeah. 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 Way, way off. Huh. It'll. I'm gonna guess after July 1st, it'll get worse before it starts moving a little. Probably in September. Yep. Once once the employment comes back, it'll be slow, but it'll come back. It'll be, it'll be incredibly slow. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. Yep. Um, yeah, provided we don't get hit with a big second wave. Yeah. I'm not holding my breath on that one, Paul. I think we're going to. I'm I'm not either. Um, but well, I don't think the medical system, the, the the hospital system is going to be challenged the way it was for the first time around, and that's the that's the key. Um, where, do, where are we going in budget here? What was that, Fred? What are we doing in the budget? We can speculate all day on what's going to happen with revenue. Yep. Yeah. All right. Fred's 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 right. Um, Let's get back to the point we're here for. Okay. Yeah. I have one other question too. How much does how much does the center school cost us per month to ha hang on to? The center the center school is we we figured uh, annually it's it's uh, ten thousand. No, oh, no it's, Jesus it's Christ! Four thousand four hundred. We just approved a. Uh, the insurance on it is like thirty five hundred, and the electricity is like what a great idea seventy five a, a month. There's no heat there for now. No, there is no heat. Just electricity. Oh, yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. heat in the building. No reason oh, to electricity heat electricity and insurance is what we're paying. Okay. All righty. Um, okay, Brian. Um, let's get back to the. Let's get back to this thing. And um, are there any other uh, potential areas for cost savings that you have seen uh, that you'd like to uh, flush out at this point, other than what we've spoken about? Um, not without going back and – I mean, we could start nickel and diming budgets if, if that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to generate a, a ton of additional savings. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other, if you're looking for, if you're looking for a big splash for the operating budget, it, it would really do something with that debt. I think we do that, you guys. I think we take, I think we pay for as much as we need to. From what we have? Out of, out of vehicle stabilization. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't take it out of vehicle state. We'll take it out of the stabilization and capital stabilization. The vehicle stabilization is essentially a savings account for when we know we're going to need new vehicles. You just, I agree. You shouldn't take it out of there, period. Right. But the stabilization, capital stabilization, there for a rainy day and we've got right. yeah. some rain. Okay. I'll buy that. I just, you know, I, I, just, I just don't want that account to continue to, to, to increase and not have a you know, people will start to look at it and, and say, why aren't you using it? Well, well, so it Jonathan, it's, the, it's there because we know we're going to have those expenses right. next year, year after, whenever. I, I, I get that, Fred. I'm just forecasting the, 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 the chatter in the, in the background, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, remember from the last meeting, we have, we've got, we're, we, you know, we're dealing with two lanes here. The first lane is to try to hang on to as much of um, savings as we can. And then the other lane is to try to um, keep the uh, impact of taxes 
at a level um, at the same level. And I think we have to decide which is the more important priority. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, okay. I don't know, but I don't know why we can't do both. So I, I don't. I agree. Well, you know, I have. You know, I admire the the the, the zero dollar increase to the taxes, but if you could, if you could cut that in the gray to seventy and half right now, I, I think I have a pretty good job. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not, I don't think we should be Sherman-esque about zero dollars. If we can cut that in half, I think we've done a good job. And I think you have to uh, uh, keep every dollar you can. I, I just, it's going to get, it's going to get ugly after the first of the year. No, I understand that, but it's going to get ugly for the town too. Yeah. So if we can, if we can take a little, if, if we can give a little on, on the interest you guys have in, in a zero zero dollar tax increase per household and cut that 70 and half and then use the rest of it through the capital stabilization. Then we're, we're, we're accomplishing both, both, uh, we're, we're coming pretty darn close to accomplishing both goals. Yeah. Mm. All right. I just looked up a couple of things. There's 188, 620 in capital stabilization. There's only 52, 128 in vehicle stabilization. So you can't take the fire truck out of vehicle stabilization. It would have to come out of capital. Fine. Okay. I think we or, are. or the general yeah. stabilization fund. General right. has 369, 896 in it, according to what I'm looking at. Right. That's, that's the numbers I've got here. But yeah. there's no reason we couldn't take it out of that or that's some true. combination of... Yeah, general and capital. Yeah, I, I think if you take forty for that forty out of stable some stabilization, and you let forty still sit in the general ops, you've done a good job, you guys. Well, it's certainly uh, and the tax rate goes up about ten or eleven cents, basically. Yeah, so thirty-five bucks a family, which is again. Yeah. It's pretty good. There aren't many other towns that are doing that. No, no, no. definitely not. So let's, uh, let's, if, I, if I'm, Brian, our next meeting is going to be a voting meeting, right? Um, unless we want to schedule one before June 9th. Say that again. The next one we have scheduled is June 9th. June 9th. Okay. Yes, we'll have to vote at that meeting. If we need to meet before, then we should. Um, but yeah, we'll need to vote on June 9th. So June 9th is the vote. Okay. Um, okay. Why, why do you think we would have to meet prior? I, uh, I don't know that we do. It's your comfort level with everybody's comfort level with well, if you think we need to meet, then set it up. That's why you're making the big bucks. I can set up a meeting pretty easy. <laughs> Whether you want to show up is a question, I think. Yeah. Well, why don't we hold it to June 9th right now, and if something um, comes yeah. up, Brian, give us a shout, and you know we'll talk offline here at some point. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, do we have so we're all we're all set with um, Keith's needs, right? Um, Where the what's the deal with the wood chipper? I know it's broken and it was going to cost ten grand to fix it. Now we're leasing or buying a new one. Uh, you know, I'm with Fred. On, I'm with Fred on that one. He said the brush can sit there another year. Yeah, that's that's can't do question. that every storm. Yeah. Just pile it up. So in the operating budget, there's $6,000 for rental for a wood chipper. Yeah. If he buys one. It's 60 grand. Yep. Or he could do a lease purchase. It'd be 12 grand a year. Why don't we think about that next yeah. year? I, everybody, I, everybody has a wish list. 
I want to know if it's worth putting 10 grand into the one we have. I know What's it's 20 it? years old, but I mean, how many hours are on the thing? If it's got, you know, a thousand hours on it, then it's worth putting 10 grand into it. I'd much rather put 10 grand into it to fix it than to spend 60 for a new one. You know, maybe I'm being a cheap shit, but. How long are they supposed to last? What if they're abused? Well, that, you know, I'm looking at, you know, as far as a, a year, the term of it, you figure on 30 years is what we figure for a life expectancy. It's 21 years old now. All I can tell you is that if we put the $10,000 into it and we wanted to sell it tomorrow, we wouldn't be able to get 10000 for it. We're not talking about selling I, it tomorrow. I'm I'm not saying that, but it, it's the same thing as when you have your own vehicle and you you get in get into an accident and it's going to cost more than it's worth it's you have to make that decision um you know as far as the the situation goes with whether we let brush shit sit around for you know forever for weeks on end or year until for another year whatever we can do that but at the same point in time you got to remember that i feel it should be at least maybe let the residents make a decision because they're the taxpayers, and if they're all comfortable and they know that this is a possibility and the brush might sit on their front yard for weeks on end or for a year, they let them make the decision. Why can't, you, why can't the brush be picked up, brought down to the town um, garage area, piled up, then we get the fire department in there to burn it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> It sounds right like there. there. We're playing with, you know, it's you not, can use that new fire truck. Yeah. You it's know, as far as, as far as once the brush, you know, first of all, you know, to explain it a little bit more, when you try to move brush, especially green brush, it's so difficult to move it. It's like a, um, it's like hauling mattresses. You try to push down on it, it springs right back up. So it's, it's very, inefficient to try to load it onto dump trucks and move it around it it's certainly more cost effective to chip it up where it stands and you get so much more compacted into a truck load by chips than you ever can by trying to pack brush into a truck yeah. if we bring it back to the garage and it's in and it's been put into a pile once it's done that then you can't move it you can't pull it apart by hand anymore it has to be done by machinery, and again, you're just wasting, wasting money and efficiency as far as operating it. I really feel that this is something that the, that, when it comes down to it, perhaps could be done as a, as a special as an article on town meeting floor, and let the residents decide whether they want their taxes to go up a little bit to keep that service. There's a lot of residents in this town that appreciate the fact that we can deliver wood chips to them um and that's generated from the fact that we're chipping the brush so yep. i feel it's a service that should be at least offered to the residents maybe they'll have to pay a little bit more for it but let them make the decision i don't i don't like it but that that's it makes sense to let the people decide but well if you look at look at this expense in a budget and and even though it's a different item you know we're delaying the cola 14 was it 10,000 or 14,000 cola 14,000 pardon 14,000 14,000 so what are residents going to look at you're you're delaying a cola but you're buying a wood chipper which is more important uh, i don't know <laughs> Depends upon the resident. I, I guess, yeah. Good answer. Uh, it depends who goes to the meeting. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Um, yeah, Keith, Keith is a town employee. He's not going to get his 2% cola, but he's going to get a new wood chipper. Yeah. Are you happy with that, Keith? Again, you know, when it comes to the colas, you know, the, my feeling is, and, and I'm not 100% sure where things stand is, with the elementary, the support staff, you know, as far as the custodian, for instance, is the custodian at the elementary school gonna get a raise? 
If so, why doesn't the custodian in the town office get a raise? Those are, those are the things, if, this, if I know other than contractual employees, everybody's having to go with a, with a 0%, then I can accept that. But if, the, if there's some in town employees that are getting a COLA, then everybody should get the COLA. Then you should be working for the school department. Yeah. Well, well, and maybe we should just put every town budget under one big operating budget of the school department. Then, no, well, I wouldn't be. I don't want to do it with the, the school department. Will own this town. They already do. I, I think we want to be very careful. And, and to Keith's point, we want to be very careful not to pit one town department against another town department because that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and. I mean, I, I'm of the mind to, to, to have a conversation in the next couple of weeks with, with um, the, the union heads and say, come on, th these are truly remarkable times. And in the spirit of shared sacrifice, will you forego a COLA increase this year? And see what they at least say rather than speculate. Well, let us know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I mean, <laughs> so good no, luck. No it's luck. a great, I, it's a great theory, but I think it's a conversation you should have. Oh yeah. yeah. But I'd be very interested to see what what comes out of that. Um, could, could someone explain how do you come up with the? I know the the twelve thousand is six thousand plus six thousand, but the description under which ever doesn't make sense to show you need 12,000. Why is it only 6,000 you need? Somebody the difference between that. purchasing and rental. Okay, okay that's 6,000. <laughs> the 12,000 is a yearly cost. I, I still don't understand how you come up with 12,000. The description doesn't, to me, justify the 12,000. So the wood chipper, that's, so in Keith's budget, in the current public works budget, he, he's carrying $6,000 for equipment rentals. Okay. That's already there. It's already there. Okay. If, he, if we're going to purchase the wood chipper or pay for it in some other way, we can take the 6000 out of the operating budget. <laughs> right. And if we were to do that through a five-year Oh, 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 okay. I see. I see. This is a reduction. Okay. It's, it's a negative number. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I missed that. Okay. So, um, I, I think what needs to happen is these numbers need to come together and Brian, you need to put at the top of the page last year's budget what we have to do to get to that budget with this year's expenses and just top to bottom in terms of dollars so that we can make a decision based on looking at this list and it's one page one list and you know is it a cola is it a chipper is it um you know Communications, is it, what is it? Where do we have to, where do we have to whittle this down to get to that top number? Am I making sense or not? No? Yeah, well, you are, Paul. I think. Because right now, everything is explainable. But it's not, um, it's not user friendly. Let, let's put it that way. So for us as a committee to look at, we need to look at one document mm. and see what's on the number we need to get to and where the reductions are going down that list by department or expense starting with the highest to the lowest and how we get to that number to match last year's number. Brian, would it be possible to put up, <clears throat> put up, not, not this time, next time, 
an Excel spreadsheet onto the screen share that did that. So that when you change a number, the bottom line, we can see what the bottom line is. That would be helpful. That would work. Yes, it's possible. Okay. I, think, I think that would be the most helpful for everyone is what? Play, playing what if games. You know, if you take this out, then the number changes immediately. Yep. You know. What is, but what is the top number? The top number is yeah. a level fund. Level fund for which? For two two zero two zero. Level fund for the town operating budget. Can't go back a year. I think Paul wants to level, get a zero tax increase out of this. Yes. That, that's what I'm shooting for. A zero then we'll tax. Have, then we'll have to have a meeting in the fall. Be because what we get on state aid fluctuates how, what the tax rate will be. True. Well, that's true. Right, 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 right. Okay. Paul, I'm going to go back and encourage you to think about, you know, some small increase. If to, I, I think we would all be, I, I think we may come to that. But if we don't shoot for the moon. Yeah, you have to shoot lower if you don't even know what state aid's going to be. 55,000 is a big number. And then if we have to have, you know, a marginal increase, at least we can say we flush this thing out and this is really the way we feel we have to go. Um, are we comfortable with that? Everybody? No, I mean, I, you know, just throw it out there. I'm comfortable with that. That's fine. Okay. I'd like to see that. Okay. Yeah, wait, um, I have one other question. Yeah. About the water, the enterprise fund. What if their revenues decline? And they're look, weren't they looking to pay for something? What if their revenues declined enough and they didn't have enough to pay what they were supposed to pay? They have about, they have, have over $100,000 in retained earnings. If it's more than that, then... We're on the hook again. They're projecting a net increase in local receipts, though. Really? Yep. Yep. According to this, according to projected yes, revenue yes. sheet. I mean, I, I don't see what's the rationale. What's the scenario where, where, where their revenue stream would go down? I mean, people aren't using less water. Yankee Candle was closed for two months. Mm. Yeah, they're probably, that's a fair point. Okay. they're probably the biggest user in town. Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a very fair point. It's only, only because I drive by there every day. Mm. I had heard the residential use is up. So, I mean, you got to remember all the people are home. I don't know how it would play into our, our scenario. People are home. Get that right. Okay, Brian, what are we looking at here? Contract extension, Waitley bio drawversity, joint meeting. Did Brian leave? No, I'm here. Okay. Um, How's that? Is that better? That's better. So you want you want a town operating budget? to match, you want the town operating budget for 2021 to match 2020. Right. Yep. So that the tax rate matches. Well, and then that, that's, that's the most we can do to, to help us get down that road because we don't know what the tax, what the state aid is gonna be. So all we can do is try to hold our expenses from year to year. Now, if we take a look at that sheet and all of a sudden, you know, to Jonathan's point, well, we have these two issues here that we really need to fund and we've got to bring that along and it's going to hit, it's going, it's going to have an increase of X. Well, that may have, have to be, but I think we at least have to take the effort 
to try to have a level a level fund from last year to this year. I totally agree. That would be very not very nice, but I don't know the how un- realistic it is. But the unknown is tough. Heard. I mean, it, it's certainly doable. I mean, right now, as the budget with those with those reductions is that's a it's around what is it sixty five thousand over. If you're gonna take you could take that amount out of the debt, but that money's got to come from somewhere. Mm-hmm. So well. What, what if, eighty thousand at it from from the reserves, and that would that would bring it. You would bring the tax rate projected. You would bring it down. You would bring it below FY twenty. So it's either you use the reserves or you increase taxes. It's one or the other. We're talking, right? That's right. Basically. Yeah. And how much of the reserves do we want to use? Well, if you want to take care of that fire truck, there's 80. Yeah. We Again, can I'm going to advocate half. We can go 40 and 40 from from the two capitals. Yep. Oh, no, I'm thinking, I'm saying 40 from capital and 40 from ops. I, 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 don't, I don't understand the, the, the absolute doctrinaire 0% increase. Because... Optics. It shows that it shows that you tried. Well, but we're trying now. We can we can demonstrate that we've tried by by getting it as low as possible. Zero percent seems like an like a. It's a draconian. A, it's a draconian approach, but the times that we are living in right now, with so so much uncertainty. And what we've gone through and what's ahead of us, I mean, it's, you know, where's, where's the crystal ball? We just don't have it. Right. I couldn't agree more, Paul. And that's why I'm saying if you take 80 out of stabilization, you're, re, you're, you're reducing your options for, 20, for the next fiscal year, which we all agree could be a, a tougher fiscal year. So... By, yeah, that's a fair by point. allowing a small increase. Yeah. But my point to this whole thing is that when, when we vote, we're looking at one list. Like right now, we're going back and forth. You know, we're talking about fire truck. We're talking about, you know, different expenses and different departments. We need one page, one right. list. Yeah. And then we can go down one by one. Okay. Is this staying or is this going in, out, in, out, in, out. And then when we get to the very end, we'll, we'll have a picture of, do we need to pop the tax rate a little bit or can we hold from what, from what we, to what we did last year? Um, but without that kind of a tool in front of us, right here, this is this is this is pretty tough. Right. No, I agree, and I love the tool. Yeah. I just don't want us to go in thinking that we're hard and fast on 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 zero percent increase until we go through that exercise. Yeah, I I agree, Brian. Um, why don't? So it's not going to be one page. I can guarantee you that much. <laughs> You make it small like that other one, you'd probably oh, print it all on. Oh, I could make it as small as you wanted, but great. Um, I, hey, Brian, can you can you show us a table with with the, the cash that, that we have here for the next year's budget, which would be the free cash plus all the stabilization accounts that we have. What's the what's the balance <laughs> of accounts? Do you have that in a in a table somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, he does. He gave that to us. Yeah, we've got that. That the total is a million two forty two eight twenty two, with free cash being at six thirty two. Yeah. Okay, but now we're we're already assuming taking two hundred out of free cash. Yeah. I though I've got a question. The two hundred is essentially an arbitrary number. It's a number we've used in the past. 
why couldn't it be 210 or 220? Very good. I like that. It could be. That's all. Free cash is over taxation. Could, could uh, be. Well, that's subjective, but okay. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just an arbitrary number we've used for years. It is. To reduce the tax rate. We could take a little more to reduce the tax rate further to where we want it to be. But, but again, that's going to make next year tougher. Uh, it it leaves less in free cash going into next year. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and we know that next year could be worse than this year. Well, we don't know. Let's see that. In, uh, I get that feeling. I get that sentiment. And, and can't say that you're wrong because we just don't know. But in addition, it's very difficult to say that um, that will occur. Uh, it, yeah, you got to stay. Who knows? Take care of what's at present, present, not worry about next year. You know, I mean, if the if the job market comes back strong, if you know, if we get that vaccine for September, if uh, you know that stock market kicks off again, my goodness. And, and it's great. not that we're taking these accounts down to zero to fund this year. We will still have healthy stabilization accounts, and we will still have a. It, Decent it's amount, there just a little just bit less in free cash. Fred, Fred yeah. it's there for just what you said. We're in a friggin' bind. Mm -hmm. And you want you don't want to use it, but you have to use it. So why don't we do this? Brian, I will personally work with you to try to create a sheet that we can work with, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet like Fred mentioned, um, with the various goals with the various departments and expenditures and um, those that those that that we must have and those that uh, we can re reduce and what will the reduction be and we can look at it um, together and make changes together on the sheet on screen live and see what the total is can can that be done, or is that going to be so much work that you're not going to you're going to have as much hair as I do by the end of it? No, it, it's okay, it's, let me show you. it's doable. It's That's done. what I'm talking about right there. Okay, um, you're still going to end up with a bulky piece of paper to look at if you yeah. try. No, to it, get it, every nook and cranny it, available it, to you. No, Dan, it's going to be up on the screen when we have the meeting. It's going to be up on the I screen. Understand. Yeah, I understand that. But you're 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 putting too much together in one basket because you're going to be jumping all over this in order to be able to read it. Okay, we don't need to look at the enterprise fund because there are yeah, there are lots of world. things you don't have to look at, and mm -hmm. the spreadsheet can also be set up with a split screen so that your bottom line is at the top all the time, and you scroll down through and right. make the changes. Exactly. So what, what's the activity that we're going to do with that? It's a, uh, it, it, as we're it, going through that, we can vote on whether or not we, we want that change. And then we're done. N knowing what the impact is on the tax rate, because that's, that's our key consideration here is what the tax rate right. is. Right. But also knowing that um, any – calculation of the tax rate at this point is a little speculative. Well, we can only go with the information we have. Right, exactly. We so. can only do what we can do. Right. So the monies that we have in front of us, those are the ones we can manipulate. And whatever comes from the state, well. We take our best guess at what's coming from the state right. and just go from That's there. That. That's that. Um, you know, for instance, you know, we're talking about the cola. Was it four, how much was that? Fourteen grand? Yeah. Yep. 14. You know, so and then adjustments were another uh ten point nine. Who knows? Maybe that comes out of maybe maybe those monies come from some we take those monies that and maybe we could leave that in the budget and take it from somewhere else. I yep. right we, now we can I, I, I can't we, we can play with their games we can play with it. Right. Like taking more for the out of stabilization and call it for the interest payment for the truck to put something back in. Right. We can also 
change the recommendation on the COLA, make it half of what was suggested, rather than the whole thing. Right. We have a lot of options. But I just think we need to see right, it uh, need a real and do it later. in real time. And uh, <laughs> so, Brian, what do you think? So, can you see the spreadsheet that's up there now? Yep. Yes. What do you want added to that? I can't make that decision right now. What do you think is pertinent? Well, first of all, I want the enterprise fund out of there. I don't, we don't need to look at that. Um, but then we have our, we have our operating budget with no enterprise for both on, for both years. And, but we don't have a total at the top. The so, we so we can't come down and say, okay, uh, accounting software. No, we're not going to, we're not going to go there this year. Um, we're, we're oh, gonna, have I mean, I'm, I'm just taking this just as an example. So we pull that out and now at the top, we see what the new total is but we have to be able to work towards a number or away from a number. And right now, I, I have some difficulty doing that. And Brian, I think if you could also split the screen so the top just stays as the tax reduction number or the tax levy numbers, and then you scroll down and leave that as a constant at the top, and then you can scroll down through the line items changing and then that will change the number at the same time. Does that make sense? Well, tech, yes, technologically it makes sense. <laughs> I, I think that's what people would want to see is as you change number X, how does the tax rate, how is the tax rate impacted? And if you just leave the tax rate in, you know, as a top line, that's mm -hmm. always on the screen and everything else you can scroll through. So how, I understand the exercise and I understand the setup. What are we going to be changing? What are we going to be changing and why are we changing it? I think they just want to see and be able to change it. <clears throat> okay, if I was to ask you right now, what are we gonna? Well, for instance, if, if we change how we're paying the debt service. Are we taking it out of uh, one out of, of the capital. capital stabilization funds? If yeah. you take that out of the operating budget in that way, it changes the number. If okay. you take down the COLA, reduce it by half, how does that change the number? If you do the wood chipper repair versus leasing, how does that change the number? So taking these things that you've suggested as cuts that are still on the table as not, you know, set in stone, like the school numbers are set in stone pretty much. But the, the variables that we have, how does changing those variables impact the bottom line? So you don't need a department, so you don't need to, do you wanna go line by line or no? No, if, if there's something that's not in play that we can't really change, I think, by, no I think have department by department is the way to go. But I mean, you don't have to go line item like, uh, well, I don't have it here in front of me, but. Um, and there's an awful lot of the budget that's really not in play. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's one of my. And that if, if we can, if you can set up, an, whether it's working off an old spreadsheet or set up a new one, that essentially shows the items that are in play or could be in play. And, you know, adjustments from the various funds, how does taking from one fund or free cash impact things. But, you know, to put up budgets, you know, as I said, like the school budgets that we can't adjust doesn't, there's no need for that. Right. But there's no reason they couldn't be on the sheet just to show the level funding. They can be, but they, they can be down below. They can be someplace. Yeah, right, right. Mostly we want to see the things that are in play and how adjusting them makes a difference. Yeah. 
there can't be more than a handful of those that are still in play, right? There's not, there, there shouldn't be that many. I did But those that are could be color coded so that we could go right to them and, and address them. What if you just put those up, up at the very top? So those are the ones that we're going to deal with and vote on for next, the next meeting because we're going to vote on everything else. Hey, Brian, if you want to, I'll sit down with you or Paul can sit down with you and try to construct this. Uh, I don't think, I don't think constructing it's going to be too difficult. Um, Just to, to constructing it to make it as simple and clear as possible. So what do you mean by in play? Things that can be adjusted or Manipulated. paid for out of different sources. Things that impact the operating budget. Yeah, that we, we talked about that we have control over at this point that we talked about tonight right essentially those things that we talked about tonight okay things that we spoke about tonight we have not come to a complete agreement on and i think if they were in black and white on a screen in front of everybody real time we could say yay and a and then Put the thing to bed. Yay, nay, or how? How? Where do we want to pay for it? From you know, right, how, right. How are we going to shuffle things around? Right. So we're because, looking. We're looking at the, the the bottom line would be the the uh, the increase in budget or, or the budget amount, and you're going to try to <coughs> try to. I, I'm not sure how you would justify one leaving one these uncertain items in there uh just based on the cost i mean or are you going to look at do we need say a cola do we need a cola yeah is it going to be a yes or no do we need a wood chipper is it going to be a yes or no or are we looking at well wood chipper is twelve thousand and cola is 14 so you know that's that's half of what we need to make up i, I mean well, Fred, Fred, that's why I think having the dynamic spreadsheet up would help because then you can, you know, when you change one number, you can see how it affects it and then you can yeah, I, play I like with the that. numbers in real time. Yeah. Fred, you just mentioned three things and what's the impact on the budget? Well, I, I Do think you have a number? I mean, I we, really, yeah. we also got to look at a budget that's essential to the town, whether it goes up or down from last year and, and our needs change every year and what's essential changes every year. And just to say, we want to go back to what it was last year. And not what does that have to do with what we were just talking change. about? Okay. Me, Fred, not is really Fred. looking. Can I finish my, my discussion without being interrupted, please? Well, I think, it's, I think you can. Why not? I apologize. I, I think we need to look at what's essential for the town and, and to address changes that are occurring. And that may mean an increase in a budget that may not be there last year's budget, but it's there in this year's budget. And people are asking for that. I think we have to look at that. We have to consider that and not just look at the dollar amount we're looking at. That's why we have these discussions because that can come out while we're, while we're discussing what the dollar amount is or should be or what we'd like it to be. We have department heads who can, can com come in and, and, you know, tell us, give us rationales um, for going one way or another. And, um, but, as, as a selectman of the town, wouldn't you like to be able to tell the voters, the taxpayers, that you did everything you could to maintain a level funding for the town during this year, during maybe the worst year that we've seen as a nation, as a state, as a town? Wouldn't you like to be able to say that? Because I'll tell you, the next time we get on town floor, I'm going to say the finance committee was going for that. That was our goal. 
Now, if you want to go the other way during that time on town floor, we can have that discussion. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. That's why we have town floor. But to me, I would think we would want to be able to tell the taxpayer that we did everything we could. Now, to Jonathan's point, if, if we got to kick it up a little bit, but we try. But we went down the road and we tried. So that's what it's about. I personally think that at least my goal is to, and I don't want to belabor this because that's not what we're here for right now, but my goal is to, under the current circumstances, understand the challenges of individual households and taxpayers while simultaneously understanding that the town doesn't stop functioning just because we're having a challenging time and that we need to find a balance between the needs of individual taxpayers and the needs of the town as a as an entire community. Yeah. And I really I, I, appreciate sure. Paul, that yeah, you, absolutely. That that um, that you put it as hey, maybe this is a goal to have a zero tax increase, but at some point what you have to give up to make that goal is going to be not beneficial to the town. So I really appreciate that you put that as a as a goal but not as an absolute we have to do this. Right. We, we right. Just have to be. We have to be thoughtful about it. And I think that's kind of what Fred and John have been getting at as well. I just want. I to... I I agree with that. I I, I agree with. Can, if I can make one point, what we seem to be doing since we're talking about plans to use stabilization, to use capital stabilization, I think that our determination has to be what levels are we comfortable leaving those funds at. Yeah. Yeah. With the budget, because we. I mean, if we wanted to, we could deplete them and have a big tax cut. I mean, yeah. we're not going to do that. But sure. it's if we're going to use those funds to a greater degree than we normally do in a normal year, our question really comes down to what level are we comfortable with leaving those funds at? Right. And it, and it's all very subjective, obviously. It is at some completely. Yep. And there are how many of us, you know, three select board members, seven of you guys? Yep. So you know, well, ten six. subjective perspectives and lenses, and we just all need to be comfortable that each of us have our own lens that we have to to, to go with. Yeah, you know, it's a it's, it's a melding of the lenses is what it comes right. down to, and um, so, but I think in order to do that successfully and feel comfortable, I think that spreadsheet that Fred is speaking of would be of enormous help. I agree with that 100%. So, Brian, you okay? Yeah. You're not mad at us, are you? Come I don't on. know. I don't know if we're going to get all that done on June 9th. And well, well, I mean, you're going to make it before June 9th, right? <laughs> well, I was going to ask Brian to have the spreadsheet for us first thing in the morning. Yeah. You know, which morning? I'll, I'll keep it on your porch. You can't look at it for 72 hours, though. Cooper. <laughs> I think he should have had it ready for us for this meeting, actually. Yeah. Well, you know, a yeah, little, a little forethought would have been nice. <laughs> uh, but uh, no. So, okay. Um, I kind of think we're all on the same wavelength for the, for the most part. Jim. <coughs> Jim Savine, are we good? Jim took a little nap. I had to unmute myself, sorry. Okay, all right. And the answer is no. Okay, no, not right. good. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll go and we'll look at all of those. We will look at the budget once again on June 9th. We will vote on the budget on June 9th. Prior to the vote, we will look at a spreadsheet that shows us how we get to a number or not. And what number? Those, well, well I, I, I mean, mean, whatever number we're comfortable with. To start right. off, it has to be last year's number, last year's operating budget num number. I guess my point is we can we can get to the number. <coughs> we just need to know what the number is. You can't do the tax rate. 
because you can't do the tax rate without getting, all you can do is look at what you have control of. Yeah. And all we can say is, let's say that miraculously we come up with a number that is equivalent to what the budget was last year. Level funded. That's okay, let's awesome. just yeah. say that happens, okay? Then, and then let's say the state aid is what, whatever it is, and the tax rate gets a bump. Well, you know, that's out of our hands. It's gone. It's... We good? Yeah. Oh, we're not deciding on anything capital tonight. Well, you said there was only one capital item. No? Am, am I wrong? You got a bunch of them. Okay. I, for some reason, I heard that there was only one capital item in flux. No, there's... Okay. Yeah, the radios. Okay, go ahead. Let's do them. What do you want to... So, well, there's the excavator. That was... We had talked last time about... We're finding another source to pay for the excavator. Right. Right? About using okay. Chapter 90 funds for that. So that wouldn't hit. That's not going to hurt us. And then we talked about the communication. <coughs> um, okay. Yeah, actually, this is the old one. <clears throat> how small it is. Are you trying to get us into something? Yeah, can you, can you see that yet? No. 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 Yeah. So the two main things we we're talking about the excavator, which we we're going to try to at least front load chapter 90 funds. Yep. Yep. So that there's no town capital payment. There's public safety radios per the public safety radio purchase. That's a total of around 43,000. Much of that being subsidized by the state. So if we split it over two years, that's what the, the email from JP Kennedy was asking if we could split it evenly over two years. Correct. Those were the two things that we had talked about as as really must haves, I think. Mm -hmm. And there was talk about what if, the, what if anything we want to do with the library driveway and then the wood chipper, which I don't think we've come to any resolution on. The library driveway, the opportunity is that the, they're redoing Chestnut Plain Road this sum, later this summer, so it's cheaper when everybody's out there to do it then. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be done. Um, it'd be nice if it was, yeah, there's going to be some cost savings there, but, um, and then for all the other, for all the other capital items, I, I think we have to push them off at least, at least till we know what state aid is for, um, for FY21. What this doesn't include for free cash, it, so this is FY19 free cash, which means whatever we get in 20 isn't included in here. Mm -hmm. We can't oh. even, you can't even start talking about that yet because that won't happen until fall time. That, right. Right. The only other comment I'll make is at, okay. one of, at the last Zoom meeting, we talked about taking some of the remaining amount, some of the 382, 978, and putting it somewhere. Right. So if the state drags their feet in recertifying our free cash, we will have some cushion if, you know, something comes up and we need some money. Right. We can vote it back in. We, right. You know, if we take 200,000 of the 382 and put it in stabilization or so I don't remember exactly what we discussed. I think we general good memory. General stabilization. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. That'll leave us 182,978. Right. Hopefully 
at some point in the fall, we will have free cash certified again, and that number could conceivably go up to four or 500,000 again. It could. Which would be a very lovely, comfortable number. Mm -hmm. But I suspect it will. I suspect it will this year. But yes, we, that's what we're talking about is this year. Yes, FY20, we will be more than whole in FY20. Yes. And then we just vote the money back in. If in the fall. We, that's right. If we need the money, like Lynn was saying, if we need the money, we have it. It's not tied up in free cash it's in general stabilization and we can kind of spend it as we wish or leave it in the savings account tommy that's good memory yes is everybody okay with that that's yeah. a good approach yes. i am i am yep that's good all right so brian you why don't you figure that is something that we're going to vote on on june 9th yeah, we can add that article. Yep. I, I still don't understand why why would we want to do that? Because we, Fred, we just in case. In where we lose free cash right on July first. So we have zero dollars in our back pocket on June, exactly. on July first for contingency. Right. You you do and you don't. It's a it's a, a tricky formula. <laughs> Oh, so we wouldn't have the 382 come on July 2nd? No. No. We don't have it until October or November. You know, number one, no one really knows how to manipulate the formula to start with because I think the formula changes from time to time. So theoretically, what you could have is the 382, if we let that stay in stabilization, all of a sudden it goes away. The state might come up with a new formula that says that, that, says that can't have that much. Right. You know, based on whatever in each town, you can only have X amount and it could be $200,000. So they keep 180 yeah. in Boston and give us two back. I mean, theoretically, you know, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's I mean, course. we will, when that free cash amount goes away, we still have our, we still have our amounts in stabilization. Right. Yep. That is ours. That's our. That's like our savings account. And the free cash is ours too. I don't think. I'm not, I'm not saying it goes it. away, but you know what I'm saying. They tie it up for a period of time. We just don't have access to it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Correct. We don't have access to it. I don't think. Well, that, but if we, we, we want to maximize the amount of money we have access to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This so, year. Right. Okay. Gonna go back to the. Library driveway is Keith still on? Um, I don't know. Keith, Keith is on, but he's not there. Because <laughs> I, I guess the the other the project going. He's on. Uh, he's just muted. No, but he's not. I, yeah, I don't see him sitting there. So. So oh no, he's not sitting there. I'll text yeah, him. The, the other the project going on is the complete streets that I guess will be advertised soon, and. I guess part part of that was to also improve the parking lot at the Waitley Inn, uh, the access entrance to it, and also create a parking lot in front of the library on Chestnut Plain. Now, my question is, is all of that gonna be done under complete streets? And if it is not, if the parking lot and the Waitley Inn lot are separate contract, could the library, driveway be part of that contract as well, rather than uh, regular chapter 90, I guess. Do you know, Brian? I don't know. Uh, Keith just came back. Why don't you ask him? Okay, Keith, for your question, Fred. Your complete streets, it's being advertised soon. Is the, uh, the entrance to the Waitley Inn parking lot and the parking lot being built in front of the library on Chestnut Plain, is that all part of the Complete Streets project? No. The, the parking lot in front of the library will be done through Chapter 90. The library parking lot, if that gets done, would have to come from another source. And the renovations in front of the 
like the weight in that there is a contribution you know we have a, a agreement that's been drafted by the lawyers for a contribution from the weight in for their portion of it but so i guess really my question is can this library driveway be done with the parking lot in front of the library it cannot that? be done with chapter 90 no well just like yeah, just but, like you well, you're not asking Chapter 90 here. I guess this is out of free cash, so. The library parking lot is, if it's going to come from, if it proposed to come out of free cash, that was the 15700 That has nothing to do with the parking out in front on the street. That's out of Chapter 90. Right. So if you fund it, if you do the work now or... or later is it going to matter mm, well again the that you know the cost will never be as low as it is to do it well i i understand we're in this situation but um you know again i at this point in time i have my bid prices for the pavement i can um refine look at the numbers again and see if there's any wiggle room in that 15,700, I, I can probably come up with a, a much tighter number than the original estimate. And I can maybe have that for your next meeting or give that to Brian beforehand. Okay. You know, just to elaborate a little more, chapter 90 will allow for on street parking but it will not allow for for public parking lots like we went through we tried to find that we found that question out when we wanted to try to use chapter 90 for the town hall parking lot right and it cannot be done okay okay um any other questions for keith on this topic um, okay, Brian. Yeah, you there? Okay. Um, so, in terms of capital items, are there any other items that you feel we need to discuss at this time? No, I think I think the other ones can can be deferred. Okay, can be delayed till we have a better picture of um, how it's going to be. Does anyone have any? Uh, questions regarding capital items um, that they would like to bring up at this time that either are on the screen or are not um, no no okay um, okay so as a, can we wind down now can we do a wind down um, Brian you do you think there's another is there another topic that we should take a look at because we've kind of gone through everything to this point. Um, I sent you guys out the CPA projects, proposed CPA projects. Right. Um, I think the last time we had met, I thought there was a decision that the finance committee wasn't going to take a position, but I can't, I don't remember if that's correct or not on CPA projects? Um, from my recollection, I think the CPA um, monies, we were told that they did not need the finance committee. They, uh, they distanced a little it. bit, so. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to adhere to how we budget. They, they didn't want to come in and talk to us, so. Uh, yeah. So they kind of do what they want, I guess. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Which I think is, uh, which is another thing that needs to be discussed on town floor so that people are, completely aware of that um, because it is tax dollars, but that's okay. If that's how they want to do it, that's how they want to do it. Um, I, I have a concern on that. And I don't know if, if you would share the same call or not, but uh, I guess maybe right now I'm directed to Brian it, is to ask CPC committee. Uh, I, I saw the list of uh, proposed projects that they're submitting uh, for a town meeting, I guess the one I'd like to get more information on, and I know it, it's out there if you want to go look for it, 
look at minutes and 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 uh, FCAT and stuff. Is there uh, the Chestnut Plain Road uh, land purchase there? Whatever it's called, a Kestrel it's land purchase for the sixty thousand dollars that they're asking now. One point I heard it was eighty-five or ninety thousand. I guess if if you want at least my endorsement or select board endorsement, maybe we should have more discussion. That's a major item of of what what is that represent? Is that total project? Is that matching? Is there other local funds involved? I guess I like more information on that before I could make a, a determination to support it or not. Yep. See, the, the, the difficulty with the CPC approach to bringing this simply up at town floor and having it voted on there is that you get the right people in the room and you vote for it and it passes. Right. But, it's, but the whole thing isn't vetted the way we, the town of Waitley, goes through expenses and has been doing it for 100 years. Um, so to me, it's, it's, it just doesn't feel comfortable. Um, but if they don't want to present, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, I guess I don't feel comfortable based on this, uh, three line, uh, description, the supporting this project. I, I guess I like to see more. Fred, well, that's, that's a question for them, not for us. Yeah. We yeah. didn't get a presentation like, no. on it. We don't know any more than you do. We yeah. just we just don't make it when there it's a uh, on the top the article on town meeting floor. We don't make a recommendation. That's all. Uh, all say, in favor? We're not recommending. The finance committee doesn't make a decision on this. Uh, can I enter? For, I'll just point out. Uh, I think Fred. I think they're talking about whether the line appears under the article recommended by the finance committee, recommended by the select board. And those are two separate votes. Right. And you can let it be known to the CPA that you would like more information before the lines, you know, select board recommends goes underneath that or not. Right. Um, and it sounds like the finance committee is, is not going to, they have, since they didn't come in, uh, is not going to talk to them, but um, it, mm -hmm. it might be prudent to just let them know that. And that's a separate vote that's at our meeting and not at a uh, at finance committee. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Totally. And my guess is that my yeah. guess is the CPC, because those items don't impact the tax rate of Waitley by a dime. That's right. It's, it's money already spent. It's yeah. taxes that's already right. raised. They already have the money. That's they already have the money. money. Yeah. So it, so in their minds, it, it, it's 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 not about affordability. It's about the vision for the town. I wouldn't go that's, that far. That's true, um, but it's also if you are a taxpayer, and a portion of your taxes goes into this fund every single year, would you want it be determined by, you know, just a handful? Of, how, how many people are on here? Three. Four? I, I mean, I really, really don't know, but um, and and have it decided on town floor, which, as we know, you have a meeting, you have a special town meeting in the middle of the summer. You get eight people in there, so now eight people are de are determining, you know, if you're moving sixty thousand dollars to buy a piece of land. You know, <laughs> that could happen. Not that it probably will, but it could, and um, so I. I think the vetting process and the, the back and forth um, is a very important part of uh, town expenses. That's my two cents. So, yeah, I I agree with what you're saying, Paul. And it, it is it is taxpayer money, and it does show up as a separate item on your tax bill. So you know you're paying for this yep. this uh, a CPA account. Right, uh, and there's no there's no guarantee that that every taxpayer has to pay that. There are exceptions to that, mm -hmm. and there are taxpayers in town that do not pay that. Mm. I wasn't so aware it's of that. Not a guarantee that it's ever going to continue at the level it is, or that everybody's going to pay it. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. Well, 
Anyway, um, okay, so Fred, you know, you're going to have to get to them and ask for more of an explanation to make you comfortable to put your John Hancock on this thing. Um, okay. Um, Brian, are you there? I'm here. Next. Okay. Are we done? I think so. Oh, okay. Um, so why don't we have a dis why don't we have a phone call? Why don't why don't we you and I have a discussion? Maybe Fred can jump in. Anybody else wants to is fine. Have uh, a little can't have too many though. Not too many. Um can't have uh, we can't have unposted meetings. Um uh, oh that's true. I forgot about that. We can't. All right, so I'll just call you and that's we'll leave it at that and then uh We'll try to come up with this budget thing. And uh, in the meantime, maybe Fred and I can have a discussion or you and Fred can have a discussion too. Um, does that sound all right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think we're, I don't think we're very far off. We just got to make a handful of critical decisions, I think. Right. And we need it in front of us. And when we say yes to this or no to something, what does it mean for the top line, which will, which is really the bottom line, but it'll be at the top. So it'll be the top line. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Um, any other further comments? Does anybody like to add anything before we sign off? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Brian. Have a great week.